In this video, I'll work through some sample problems involving predicates. So remember that a predicate is a proposition that has a variable in it. So in this case, we've got a set D, and D is just a list of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, and the predicate is the statement X is even. And so for this first question, we're just being asked which elements of this set D make this predicate P of X true. So all we need to do is plug each of these numbers in this set D into that predicate and just see whether the proposition that we get ends up being true or false. So P of 1 represents the statement 1 is even, which is false. 1 is not even. We go to the next number in our set. P of 2 is the statement 2 is even. That's true because 2 is even, and so on. P of 3 means 3 is even. That's false. P of 6 is the statement 6 is even. That's true. P of 9 is the statement 9 is even. That's false. And P of 12 is the statement 12 is even, and that's true. So the list of numbers that makes the statement true are 2, 6, and 12. Let's do one more of these. This time we have the same set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 12, and q of x is the predicate x is greater than 5. We're going to proceed in the same way. So we're going to look at what, what does q of 1 say, what does q of 2 say, what does q of 3 say, q of 6, q of 9, and q of 12. And whichever ones make our statement true, those are the ones that we're going to write down. So q of 1 represents the statement 1 is greater than 5, that's false. q of 2 represents the statement 2 is greater than 5, that's false. q of 3 is the statement 3 is greater than 5, again false. q of 6 represents the statement 6 is greater than 5, that one's true. q of 9 is the statement 9 is greater than 5, that's also true. q of 12 is 12 is greater than 5, again true. And so the numbers we're looking for are 6, 9, and Now again, we're looking at the same set and similar predicates, but this time we're looking at quantified statements. So this upside down A thing means every element. So when we say for every element in D, that's exactly what we mean here. So for all X in D, and then we're saying T of X. So T of X represents the statement X is less than three. And so the question is, is that true? So if we're trying to figure out whether a for all statement is true, what we need to do is go through each of the elements of the set and see if all of the elements of that set make that predicate true. So in this case, we're going to look at t of 1, t of 2, and so on, just like we did before, and look at whether the statement that we get, the proposition that we get, is true or false. So t of 1 represents the statement 1 is less than 3, which is true. Now what we're trying to figure out is whether this predicate is true for every element of our set D. So, so far, all we know is that the first element of the set makes the predicate true. So we're not done. We have to look and find out whether every element of the set makes the predicate true. So the next one is 2 is less than 3. That's also true. So again, so far, so good. T of 3 represents the predicate 3 is less than 3. But 3 is not less than 3. So that one's false. So we now know the answer to our question. The question is whether every element in D makes the predicate t of x true. Since we found a false, we know that they don't all make the statement true, so we don't have to keep checking. Since we found a single false here, we know that they're not all making the predicate true, and so we can stop, and we know that the answer to this question is no. This time, again, same set of numbers, different predicate. The question is whether there exists an element in D that makes s of x true. So again, this backwards e means, is there at least one, at least one element of d? And then s of x represents x is a multiple of 3. So we'd say for which x is a multiple of so now, again, we're going to go through and start checking the elements of D to see if this thing is true or false. But now all we need is a single true. 
all we need is for one of the elements of this set to make this statement true. If there's more than one that makes it true, great. That's just extra gravy, right? But all we need is a single element that makes it true. So when we check our first element, s of 1 represents the statement 1 is a multiple of 3. That's false. But that doesn't mean that we can stop, right? All we're looking for is a single true. So the fact that the first number turned out to be false, that's okay. Maybe we'll find a true later on. So we have to keep going until we find a true. So s of 2 represents 2 is a multiple of 3. That's also false, but that doesn't mean we can stop. We have to keep going until we find a true. If we make it all the way to the end of the set and we never found a true, then that's when we can stop and we could say that the answer is no. But now we say 3 is a multiple of 3, and that is true. And that means that we can stop, and the answer to this question is yes. Is there at least one element for which x is a multiple of 3? Yes, 3 is a multiple of 3. Now, we could keep going and find whether there were more than one that make it true, but that's not what we're being asked. We're just asked, is there at least one? And we know that the answer is yes, because we found one. So you may have thought that those previous couple examples, we were kind of doing it the hard way, right? Why do we need to go through each one? I can just tell by looking whether or not there's an element that's a multiple of three. But it becomes important when we have a more complicated predicate. So in this case, we're asking, is it true that for every element of d, this complicated predicate, not q of x or s of x, is that true? So that's when it becomes important for us to have this methodical way of going through whether this is true or false. So again, the process is going to be to go through this set one element at a time and see what we find. So we're going to start with x equaling 1. When x equals 1, we have not q of 1 or s of 1. So not q of 1 would mean x is not greater than 5. So 1 is not greater than 5. And then s of 1 represents 1 is a multiple of 3. So since 1 is not greater than 5, this first statement is not false, which is true. 1 is not a multiple of 3, so that's true or false, but that's true. So again, this is a for all statement, so we need to know whether every element of d makes this statement true. So far we found a true, so so far so good. But that means we need to keep checking either until we get to the end of the set when we found that everything was true, or until we get a false. So let's try x equals 2. So there we get the predicate not q of 2 or s of 2. Q of 2 says 2 is greater than 5. That's false, and not false is true. S of 2 says 2 is a multiple of 3, which it's not, so that's false. But true or false is true. When we have x equals 3, that's not Q of 3 or S of 3. Q of 3 says 3 is greater than 5. That's false, and then the negation makes that true. S of 3 says 3 is a multiple of 3, which it is, so true or true, which is true. So, so far we've got true, true, true. That means we need to keep going. Next up is x equals 6. x equals 6 gives us not q of 6 or s of 6. q of 6 says 6 is greater than 5, which it is, but we negate that, and that gives us a false. s of 6 says 6 is a multiple of 3, which it is, so that's a true, and then false or true is true. So we keep going. x equals 9. We get not q of 9 or s of 9. q of 9 says 9 is greater than 5, which it is, so the negation makes that false. And then s of 9 says 9 is a multiple of 3, which it is, so that's true. And false or true is true. And then now we're at the last element of our set, which is 12. So our predicate is not q of 12 or s of 12. q of 12 says 12 is greater than 5, which it is, so the negation makes that false. s of 12 says 12 is a multiple of 3, which it is, so that's true. And then false or true is true. So every element of our set really did make this predicate true, which means the answer to our question is yes. Finally, let's go through a, a there exists example, an existence uh, example with a complicated predicate. 
So again, one last time, we're going through these elements one at a time and looking at whether our predicate is true or false. But this time, because it's a there exists, all we're looking for is a single true. As soon as we find a true, we stop. The only way the answer to this question could be no is if we get through the entire set and every single element of this set made the predicate false. So let's see what we get. So let's start with x equals 1. Our predicate is not p of 1 and not s of 1. So p of 1 says 1 is even, and s of 1 says 1 is a multiple of 3. So 1 is not even, so 1 is even is false. Putting a negation in front of the false makes that true. 1 is not a multiple of 3, so putting a negation in front of that makes that true as well. True and true is true. And that means we can stop. As soon as we find one element of the set that makes the predicate true, that means there is at least one. We don't have to check anything else in the set. As soon as we find a true for a problem like this, we're done. So the answer to this question is yes. So the key things to keep in mind here are what are you looking for? What are you trying to check for? If you're trying to check whether a universal quantifier, a, a for all quantifier, is true, you have to go through every element of the set and you have to make sure that all of them make the predicate true. As soon as you find a false, you can stop and you know the answer is no. If you get to the end of the set and everything ended up being true, then your for all statement is also true. For the example like we just did, a there exists quantifier, again you go through every element of the set, but now you stop as soon as you get a true. If you go through the entire set and everything is false, then you know the answer to the question was no. So keep in mind what you have to do for a for all statement versus what you have to do for a there exists statement. So just as a quick summary, if we've got a domain D and a predicate P, and again, when I say P of X, that could be one of these complicated predicates. But this is true if every element of D makes P of X true. And it's false, the quantified statement is false, if there is any element of D that makes P of X false. If there exists a statement, is true if any element, if there's at least one element that makes the predicate true, but it's false if every element of D makes that predicate false. So they're similar, but it's they're similar enough to be confusing. So the way that you're going to get good at this is by practicing and going through and making sure you know for each type of quantified statement, what do you actually have to check? What is being required? What do you have to do for each of the elements of the set?